Open your Bibles to the book of uh, Exodus chapter number 1. Exodus chapter 1 and verse number 1. Sa aklat tayo ng Exodus chapter 1 verse number 1. At magkaroon tayo ng konting survey uh, patungkol sa aklat ng Exodus para sa pasimula ng pag-aaral natin ng book of Exodus ay meron tayong Uh, bird's eye view. Ibig sabihin, pangkalahatang larawan ng aklat ng Genesis para maunawaan natin kung ano ang purpose ni Moses kung bakit naisulat niya ang aklat ng Genesis at magkaroon tayo ng idea. Uh, I want you to see the big picture of the book of Genesis. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, of the book of Exodus. Uh, a continuation of Genesis. So Exodus chapter 1 verse 1, tingnan niyo, pansinin niyo, ang simula ng aklat ay parang karugtong ng katapusan ng aklat ng Genesis. It's a continuation. Uh, verse number 1, Now these are the names of the children of Israel which came into Egypt. Every man and his household came with Jacob. So parang kinokontinue lang ni uh, Moses ang salaysay ng Genesis. Go to uh, Leviticus. Tingnan mo ang Leviticus. Chapter 1 verse number 1. Leviticus chapter 1 verse number 1. And the Lord called unto Moses and spake unto him out of the tabernacle of the congregation, saying. So again, it's a continuation. And the Lord, uh, continuing from verse 38. For the cloud of the Lord was upon the tabernacle by day. Fire was upon it by night in the sight of all the house of Israel throughout all their journeys. And the Lord called unto Moses. So, ang Leviticus ay continuation ng aklat ng Exodus. Let's look at the next book. And, uh, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers. Look at Numbers. Notice how they all begin. They all begin as a, uh, as a continuation. <clears throat> Tingnan mo ang Numbers chapter 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses in the wilderness of Sinai. In the tabernacle of the congregation on the first day of the second month in the second year of that, of, after they were come out of the land of Egypt, saying. And so it continues on. Uh, look at Deuteronomy, the last book of Moses. Let's see how it starts. These be the words which Moses spake. And so look at verse 13. Halimbawa, verse 13 ng Numbers, yung last chapter ng Numbers. These are the commandments and judgments which the Lord commanded by the hand of Moses unto the children of Israel in the plains of Moab by Jordan near Jericho. These be the words which Moses spake unto all the chil- uh, all Israel on this side, Jordan, in the wilderness. So, uh, All the Pentateuch. Naalala ba ninyo yung ibig sabihin ng Pentateuch? Penta meaning five. Tuke meaning scrolls. Or we can translate that as books. Pentateuch, the first five books of Moses. These five books are simply one huge Story, <laughs> one huge narrative, one huge explanation, and they were all connected. So, sa English natin, meron tayong limang aklat, pero sa Hebrew, isa lang ang salaysay at nagko-continue siya hanggang magmula Genesis hanggang Deuteronomy. And so, that's an interesting thing. Uh, about it. So let's go back to Exodus chapter 1. <clears throat> Now, in Genesis, uh, we learned that the children of Israel migrated from the land of Canaan to Goshen in Egypt. At iniwan tayo ni 
uh, Joseph sa land of Egypt. And so now in Exodus chapter 1, these are the names of the children of Israel. And he names the tribes of Jacob uh, there. So <clears throat> this is a uh, from Genesis hanggang Deuteronomy, ang tawag sa Jew, ang tawag sa Hebrew dyan, Torah. Torah. The law. And that encompasses Genesis to Deuteronomy. So, alam na ninyo yung Pentateuch, five books or five scrolls. Alam na ninyo yung Torah, the Torah, and that's the law of Moses. And that encompasses Genesis to Deuteronomy. Okay? Ang tema ng aklat ng Exodus ay redemption. Redemption or deliverance. Uh, the word exodus means exit. Exit. So, anong ibig sabihin ng exit? Paglabas. Alright? So, saan lumabas ang mga children of Israel? Lumabas sila mula sa pangaalipin ng mga Egyptian. That's right. From the slavery of Egypt. Uh, they exited Egypt. And God redeemed them, delivered them, saved them, rescued them. You can use those words. The, but Exodus is the book of redemption, how God delivered them out of Egypt and uh, fulfilled his promise, fulfilled his word to Abraham. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, ano ang tema ng book of Genesis? In the beginning, the beginning, creation. Ano ang tema ng Exodus? Redemption or salvation. So, kung tutuusin, uh, yan ang larawan ng tao. Tayo, lahat ng tao ay nilikha ng Diyos, at lahat tayo ay makasalanan, at lahat tayo ay bumagsak sa ating kasalanan, at lahat tayo ay nangangailangan ng redemption. Pero hindi lahat ng tao na nilikha ng Diyos ay mareredeem. Sino lang ang mareredeem? Sa mga nilikha ng Diyos na tao, sino ang mareredeem? Hmm? Sinong maliligtas? Yes, yung mga sumasampalataya kay Heso Kristo lang bilang Panginoon Diyos sa tagapagligtas. And so, Genesis is the beginning. It's creation. But Exodus is redemption. And can you really live life without being dedicated to the Lord or saved? You know, life really begins at salvation. Yes, physical life begins in Genesis. But spiritual life begins at salvation. And so we're, we're so glad that God redeemed Israel and that he will redeem everyone who believes on the Lord Jesus Christ. All right? So, tingnan mo ang background ng aklat ng Exodus, matatagpuan mo ito sa aklat ng Genesis. Gen- uh, Genesis chapter 15. Go to Genesis chapter 15 for a background of the experience of Exodus. Mm. God had already revealed to Abraham, Abram, that what was going to happen to uh, his people. Genesis chapter 15, verse number 13. And he said unto Abram, Genesis chapter 15, verse 13. And he said unto Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs. Sila ay magiging parang estranghero, parang um, stranger in a land that is not theirs. And shall serve them. They are going to become slaves, enslaved. And they shall afflict them for hundred years. So how many years did... Uh, did the slavery of uh, Israel experienced in the land of Egypt 400 years, right? God said so. Look at verse 14. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge. So, yes, 
God uses other nations to deal with Israel because of Israel's backsliding. But at the same time, it doesn't mean that God's not going to judge those nations. Okay, So that's a, another thing. God will judge Egypt. And afterward, they shall come out. And you exit Exodus. They shall come out with great substance. So yes, magiging alipin sila. Yes, 400 years ang kanilang uh, suffering. Pero pag tinang pag niligtas ko sila mula sa pangaalipin, mas malaki ang blessing na makukuha nila dahil sa sufferings nila. And so with great substance. And the book of Exodus um, is not only about redemption, it's also about worship. And in the book of Exodus, God will begin to show Israel how He wants to be worshipped. And part of worshiping God is finances. And so the book of Exodus shows us how the church, how the house of the Lord is to be financed. It's to be financed with great substance. And so everything is in the word of God. The worship, the uh, order of service, the reason why we sing the reason why we give, the reason why we pray, the reason why we serve, the reason why we assemble. Lahat yan nandyan sa aklat ng Exodus. And it all begins in Genesis. And you see that here. God laying out the prophecy concerning Exodus. Uh, <clears throat> verse 15. And thou shalt go to thy fathers in peace and shalt be buried in a good old age. But in the fourth generation shall come hither again for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full oh wait a minute fourth generation who's the fourth generation from Abraham yes Abraham, Isaac, Jacob Joseph at yung fourth generation yung anak ni Joseph Manasseh and Ephraim and Manasseh and Ephraim the fourth generation from Abraham will return to take over the land of Canaan. Sasakupin nila ang lupain ng Canaan na binigay naman ng Diyos kay Abraham. Kaya lang, bakit naghintay ang Diyos ng four generations? Tingnan mo ang sabi niya. Because the iniquity, for the iniquity of the Amorites. Sino yung Amorites? Amorites is another name for Canaanites. They're the, they're the inhabitants of the land of Canaan. And so God, instead of judging Canaan immediately, gave Canaan 400 years to repent. God's merciful. He, he should have been done with it. He should have judged. And it really, He's so merciful, we're still around today. You know, the truth is, we don't deserve uh, life on earth, on breathing God's air, defying the Lord. We don't deserve that. But God gives us time to repent. And God cares about the Canaanites, the Amorites. I don't know. He said, I'm not going to let them come in because their iniquity is not full yet. There's still an opportunity for the Canaanites to repent. But God knows the future and he understands they're not going to repent. And so he says, well, in four generations, I'll come down on them and wipe them out. And uh, so it's amazing how God's plan and God's sovereignty and God's purposes encompass not just us, but even the unsaved. God wants people saved. He wants them to repent. And he gives them ample time to repent. Do you think 400 years is long enough for repentance? <laughs> Four lifetimes? Now think about it. We've been around since the flood. You know, when did the flood take place? I don't have my chart here. Two, four, five, six. Two, four, five, six years. Minus 220, or 2020. So about 4,000 years. We've been around. 
the human race has been around for 4,000. You think 4,000 years is any, enough time to repent? God is so merciful. He could have wiped us out a long time ago. But yet God wants to deliver us, wants to save us. All right? So <clears throat> this is uh, the background of the book of Genesis, uh, of Exodus. Now, kailan nangyari ang Exodus? When did the Exodus take place? And do we know when? Does the Bible tell us when? Yes, it does. Go over to 1 Kings chapter 6. <laughs> Maganda na biblisis tayo, no? Para merong sagot ang Bible sa mga tanong na ganyan. Anong taon nangyari ang Exodus? Well, if you want to know the year of the Exodus, you got to put you got to piece together what the Bible gives us, the information that the Bible gives us. Well, in 1 Kings chapter 6 verse 1, Let me give you a background here. First Kings. Six one says that Solomon reigned in his fourth year. They began the construction of the temple of Solomon. The temple of Solomon began in his fourth year of his reign. 1 Kings chapter 6 verse number 1. So now we need to know what year did Solomon reign subtract it by 4 and then we will have the fourth year of his reign when they began the construction of the temple. Well, the history books tells us that Solomon acceded to the throne of Israel was crowned the third king of Israel in 970. 970. Now in his fourth year, you have to subtract 4 from 970. Ano yon? 966. 966. So in his fourth year, 966 uh, no, BC. <laughs> BC, right? 966. This is when the temple was started. 966 BC, 1 Kings 6.1. Now there's more information that 1 Kings 6.1 tells us. <clears throat> so it says here, it came to pass in the 480th year after the children of Israel were come out of the land of Egypt. So there's 480 years mula sa paglabas nila sa Egypt. Noong itinaguyod ni Solomon ang kanyang kaharian ng ikaapat na taon na kung saan siya naghari. No, mga, mga, mga dates tayo. 480 years. Dagdagan mo yan. Dagdagan mo yung 966 ng 480 para makuha mo yung taon ng Exodus. And what do you have? 1446 BC. So therefore, 1446 BC ang taon ng Exodus according to 1 Kings chapter 6 verse number 1. So the Bible tells us the year that Moses split the Red Sea and the children of Israel were walking on dry ground. This is great. We have 1446 BC before Christ. <clears throat> Now, uh, so if that's the year that they exit, what was the year that they entered into Egypt? Ano yung year na kung saan sila pumasok? Now, tandaan ninyo ang sinabi ng Diyos kay Abraham, ilang taon sila na magiging alipin? 400 years. So, isadtrack. Dapat isadtrack yung 400 years dito. Tapos may karagdagang information pa tayo sa Bible. Look at uh, Exodus chapter 12, verse number 40. Exodus chapter 12. 
Verse number 40. So we got the year that they exited. Can we find the year that they entered into Egypt? Well, yes, we do. Exodus chapter 12, verse number 40. Ito ang testimony ni Moses. This is what Moses said. Exodus chapter 12, verse number 40. Now the sojourning of the children of Israel who dwelt in Egypt was 400, yan yung 400 na years na pang-aalipin, and 30 years. So there was another generation. 30 years, about 30 years. So when Israel came into Egypt, it was minus for 30 years. So, subtra- uh, uh, add. No. You know, are we adding or subtracting? Yeah. We're adding. We have to add kasi busy. Busy tayo. Kapag busy before Christ, dinadagdagan yung years. Hindi sinasubtract. Kasi pabaliktad tayo. Pataas ng pataas yung years. Hindi pa, 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 paliit ng paliit. So, he said 400 what? 30? So what's that? Six? Yeah? Oh, BC. So eight, uh, 1876. Yan yung taon na kung saan pumasok sila sa Egypt. So yung taon na sinabi ni Joseph, dito na kayo tumira sa Goshen. Yan. 186 BC. According to Exodus chapter 12, verse number 40. So, ang galing pala ng Bible, no? Alam pala ng Bible yung mga taon, yung record niyan. So, ang ginawa ko, pinagpatuloy ko na lang. Dinagdagan ko yung Genesis, lahat ng mga generation, para alam ko yung taon ng flood, taon ng creation. Eh, next week, siguro, i-print ko ulit yung chart para makita ninyo yung math ng Bible. And so, uh, 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 that was the year that they entered into Egypt. This is the year that they exited Egypt. And uh, how long was the children of Israel wandering in the wilderness? 40 years. So, isubtract mo yung... Ito yung taon na kung saan lumabas sila sa Egypt. Ito yung taon ng, exo, uh, ng pag-alagala nila. So, 1406 at saka 1446, dito sinulat ni Moses yung Pentachuk. He must have written the book of Genesis to Deuteronomy somewhere between 1446 and 1406. During the 40 years wilderness wandering, most likely towards the end, before they, the second generation entered into the land of promise as a review to let them know why. See, they're second generation. They don't know why. They didn't fight the battles of, of Egypt. They didn't know, understand. They had no context of the past. And so f- to give them context, Moses wrote Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Number, Deuteronomy. So the second generation of Israel can understand why they were supposed to possess the land of Canaan. And so this is how the Lord gives us uh, his, in, his books, his information. All right? Ang pinaka-prominent phrase sa aklat ng Exodus ay ito. As the Lord commanded. As the Lord commanded. Yan ang pinaka-prominent, pinaka-dakilang parirala sa aklat ng Exodus. You will find it 17 times in the book of Exodus. As the Lord commanded. And what you'll find is that God blessed Israel... Every time they did as the Lord commanded. Whenever Moses obeyed God, God blessed. Whenever the children obeyed God, God blessed. If we do as the Lord commands, are we going to be blessed? Yes. So sa Genesis, if you sin, you will, uh, you will get judgment. Sa Exodus, if you obey, you will get God's 
blessings. So, maaasahan mo kapag nagkasala ka, maaasahan mo ang hatol ng Diyos sa buhay mo. Ang palo ng Diyos sa buhay mo. Ha? Pero, at the same time, pag sumunod tayo sa Panginoon, nag-obey tayo sa Kanya, maaasahan mo ang tulong ng Panginoon. Maaasahan mo ang blessing ng Panginoon. And so, the writer of Exodus is Moses. And that makes sense. If, you're, if, he, if he wrote Genesis and he continues on the book of Exodus and continues on Leviticus and Numbers and Deuteronomy, uh, it only makes sense. There's only one writer. And that is Moses. And the mga Bible scholars ngayon, pinag-aawayan nila. No, some people say uh, there's uh, five different writers. There's the uh, this theory here and this writer here, and they just put it together. Well, that's that's uh, that's unbelief. That's not true. That's not biblical. Uh, there's only one Torah, and there's only one writer. And that is Moses. Now, sino ang may akda? Si Moses ang manunulat, pero sino ang may akda? The Holy Spirit. That's right. One writer, Moses, one author that gave Moses these words. That's the Holy Spirit of God. Okay? So, in conclusion, uh, i-conclude natin ito. In conclusion, if you want to uh, see the big picture of the book of Exodus, katulad ng ginawa natin sa aklat ng Genesis, binibayad natin ang dalawang bahagi ang Genesis, di ba? Dalawa rin ang bahagi ng Exodus. And so, uh, Exodus can be divided into two sections. Yung unang section, magmula chapter 1, Hanggang chapter 18. Yung pangalawang section, chapter 18 hanggang chapter 14. Dalawa lang ang bahagi ng Exodus. Yung unang bahagi, 1 to 18, yan ang redemption. Redemption. Alipin sila, tapos kinalas sila ng Diyos, tapos nag-exit sila. Lumabas sila sa Egypt. Yun ang redemption. Yung pangalawang bahagi, magmula 18 hanggang 40, reverence. Reverence. Dito, sinimulan ng Diyos, turuan ng mga Israelites kung paano sila dapat sumamba sa Diyos. At gamitin ang tabernacle. So the tabernacle worship begins at chapter 18 all the way to 40. The construction of the tabernacle, the details of the tabernacle, uh, the priesthood, the Passover, uh, the Passover over here, uh, and, and the uh, the priesthood, the prophets, the provisions for, and the stewardship of the tabernacle. So, tapos tatlo ang divisions nito, magmula chapter one hanggang chapter six. Eto si Moses. And Israel in slavery. Chapter 7 hanggang chapter 11. Ha? 7-11. 11-11. Huh? <laughs> yeah, you see Pharaoh. So you have Moses here, you have Pharaoh here. <clears throat> and the plagues. The ten plagues. Tapos chapter 12 hanggang chapter 18 yung deliverance deliverance and provisions Pinakain sila ng mana sa wilderness Okay so yun ang tatlong bahagi Moses Pharaoh deliverance Tapos dito naman apat ang bahagi law batas Tabernacle, idolatry. Dito sinamba nila yung ano yung yung calf, idolatry. At saka tabernacle construction. 
So, ito yung katapusan nun, no? 19 to 24. Nasa study notes naman ito. 25 to 31. May final exam kayo sa katapusan nito. 32 to 12. 32 hanggang 34. May clay lang itong idolatry. 36 hanggang 40. So this is how you break down the book of Exodus. You break it down into two parts. Worship, uh, redemption, and reverence. So ito, kasaysayan. Ito, tek, ano, batas. Hindi siya kasaysayan. So isa lang ang kasaysayan dito sa, sa bahaging ito. Yung kasaysayan ng idolatry ni Aaron. Nung umakyat si Moises sa bundok binigay sa kanya yung Ten Commandments. Napanood naman ninyo ito, no? Siguro. <laughs> At nung bumaba siya sa mountain, nakita niya yung kasuklam-suklam na pag-worship nila sa idol. Winasak niya yung Ten Commandments. Yan lang ang kasaysayan dito sa ikalawang bahagi. Everything else, para siyang batas. Ganitong gagawin mo. Ganitong gagawin mo. Ganitong gagawin mo. Tapos nung ginawa nila sa katapusan nito, bumaba ang kaluwalhatian ng Diyos sa kanila. Dahil sumunod sila sa Diyos. Alright? And so you have the breakdown. I-memorize ninyo ito. Uulit-ulitin natin ito hanggang ma-master ninyo. No? Katulad din ng Genesis. Na-master naman ninyo. Dalawang bahagi ng Genesis. Four key events. Four key people. O di alam na ninyo. And ngayon, alam na ninyo yung Exodus. Let's pray and ask the Lord to bless them. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity we have to learn. And we pray that uh, we would gain something eternal from the Word of God concerning our redemption, concerning your will and way and plan in our lives, Lord. And Father, we thank you for the redemption that we have in Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, for saving us and delivering us from the world and from sin and the slavery of sin. We thank you, Lord, that we can live for the Lord Jesus Christ, that we can uh, enjoy the freedom in Christ to do that which is right, Lord. We thank you for that wonderful freedom, the privilege of being a Christian. We thank you for that. We thank you that the Bible always has the answers. And we ask that you bless us now in Jesus' name. Amen.